Wow, well, it certainly kicked off here at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. We start with Suella Braverman. She was giving her speech, quite a tub thumper of a speech, covered a load of issues. We'll get stuck into that. But a Tory member of the London Assembly was thrown out of the conference hall after heckling the Home Secretary. Now, before that, Bravman told the Conservative Party conference they will do whatever it takes to stop the boats. She warned that the country faces huge challenges. She says, of course, that the public knows that the Tories are the best party to deal with them. She went on talking about the fact that we do too much as a nation at the moment, to stand up for the human rights of criminals. She even mentioned sexual predators. She even mentioned paedophiles, actually, and said that we need to stop protecting the human rights of everybody else, OK? She also said that there is the Luxury Belief Brigade, which exists in this country, who have these lofty ideas about things like open borders, but whose lives aren't really touched by the real-world consequences of their own ideology. So the Human Rights Act should be renamed the Criminal Rights Act, and that it would be much worse, she says, under Labour. OK, lots to unpack here. I am joined by GB News' political editor, Christopher Hope, and also the Conservative MP for Mansfield, Ben Bradley. Both of you, thank you very, very much. Um, Christopher, can I just start with you? Because, look, shortly we're going to be having a little <laughs> bit of video, I think, from this protester. But what, what happened? You caught up with this guy as he was... Well, that's I, I, I was hot-footed here from your stand here to go and find him. Find him out there. Interview him on my mobile phone. We'll see that shortly aired on GB News. He's Andrew Boff. Uh, a Tory party member for 50 years. He stood to be the Conservative candidate for London Mayor a uh, while ago, in, when they're looking for the right candidate a couple of times. He's a man who's respected within the party, certainly within the capital. He was protesting, he says, about what he sees as transphobia right. in the government policies, and he's wearing, I think it was a rainbow lanyard. So he's concerned about the, the Home Secretary, the way the Home Office is taking some stand in that, in that point. He's very concerned. I've never in my time, 20 years covering politics, seen a Conservative elected mayor of an assembly shout at the Home Secretary in such an embarrassing public way. OK, Ben, before we get stuck into the actual substance of what Suella said, I mean, is she transphobic? No, I think um, the government, Suella, are quite rightly uh, putting safeguarding at the forefront of that. Uh, it was around prisons and where um, trans people yep. go in, in male or female prisons. And we've seen some horrible examples of what happens if that goes wrong and if safeguarding is not at the forefront of that. I don't think it's transphobic to say that um, you know, biology is really important in that conversation and we have to protect the rights of women uh, in female prisons, in female spaces. So I think she's spot on. Inevitably, it's a contentious conversation, isn't it? So yeah. I'm not surprised some people disagree, but I think... Uh, uh, I think she's spot on. OK, all right, we will have more on that a little bit later on because we're going to get a bit of video footage. And, in fact, I am doing a segment on that very thing later in the show, which is about whether or not somebody who was born biologically male uh, can end up in a woman's prison. One would imagine the same would apply the other way around, although arguably a bit less threatening. Um, Ben, I'll get you on some of the substance now of what she said. She said that we have to stop bogus asylum claims, that the Human Rights Act should be renamed the Criminal Rights Act, that Labour have voted against everything that you guys have tried to do to stop the boats uh, and curb illegal migration, and that we have a choice now between strong borders under the Tories or open borders under Labour. Is that fair? I think so. Um, I think we have been trying really hard for a long time to tackle this issue of illegal migration. I've been on your programme before talking about what that means to our communities. It's not about race. It's not about what country people come from. It's about fairness and the access to public services and the impact that it has on those communities. And I think you were right in your, um, your kind of intro earlier on to say it affects some communities really yeah. um, acutely and other people, you know, it means there's a new interesting restaurant on the corner. Exactly. Um, so I think she's spot on to raise it. I think she has consistently in the last few weeks, particularly her immigration speech a few weeks ago, got into these international treaties and um, this international obligations that we have that consistently seem to prevent us from taking the action we need to take to tackle those border issues and really important that she's uh, willing to now dig into that and to make changes. But are you happy with the, with the language being... Even for me, immigration is always about language and how you term it. She described there about unprecedented mass migration, a hurricane. Are these, is this language which you want to see the modern-day Tory party use? Is language more of UKIP in the old days, no? I have to, we have to accept this is a really important issue that people really care about. And I think um, lots of people feel that way, rightly or wrongly. Um, but again, there's always, from the outside, there's a, a kind of racial overtone that's added to it, which is not actually there in what she ever says. Uh, it's entirely about that fairness issue. And if you live, you know, if you rely on public services in particular, um, you are impacted by the fact, I'm a council leader, right? Increasing amounts of our funding that is meant for vulnerable kids or vulnerable mm. adults is spent on housing um, illegal migrants, is spent on things that it's not there for. The, the, the one thing that 
you can't really get around is that this has happened on your watch, hasn't it? Well, it's a particular COVID issue, isn't it? So people used to come in the back of lorries. Uh, nobody really noticed. We didn't. Mm. Uh, we looked at it, and there were some tragedies that happened in those circumstances too. Yeah. But it became incredibly visible when the lorries weren't coming, and people started to come on small boats. Uh, so it's quite uh. a recent issue. Um, and one that we are trying really hard to tackle. I think it's pretty clear what Suella says is, is right, that we are the only party that's likely to be in government anytime soon that is going to tackle it. Um, but there are these clear barriers, particularly judicial review, particularly international obligations. And I'm really pleased that Suella uh, is saying now, you know, we want to renegotiate those things internationally, but actually we're not going to wait for that. We need to get on and do what we need to do. OK, all right. She did also hit on so law and order. So it wasn't just all about immigration. She was very strong on law and order. Uh, she alluded to the idea of Just Stop Oil being the kind of power behind Labour's potential throne. Uh, she said that the Tory party have done a lot to tackle on grooming gangs and that they are focused, laser-like focus, on cracking down on the biggest terror threat, which is the Islamist extremism threat. She said thank you very much to all of the police and crime commissioners that were there. But there is a perception in this country at the moment that law and order has gone to the dogs. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we are um, getting back to a place where we've got um, more police officers, certainly in Nottinghamshire where I'm from, we're back about the same level as we historically ever have been, uh, which is good. I think there's a neighbourhood element to that. I think there's something about priorities and focus that Suella is touching on there, and she talks a lot about people being pulled off in directions that shouldn't necessarily be priorities. Um, and actually, we really need to focus that neighbourhood and that local policing on the crime that affects people, the burglary, the antisocial behaviour. And we've seen crackdown in recent months on things like the antisocial behaviour that blights communities. So I think they're getting to the right place. Um, government doesn't directly always run the police and mm. set those priorities so it's not always a straightforward yeah. thing for her to tackle but there's also you know it's increasingly complex crime increasingly online increasingly that terror side of things we never see as the public because it's it's managed outside yeah. of our sphere we, so we don't hear about a lot of a expensive lot, and complicated things. a lot of the near misses yeah no uh, that, that is absolutely fair enough um i'm just going to go now uh, i think to this images and the videos that we do have of so this is a chap who was saying he's andrew boff a um conservative uh, am uh, uh, yeah assembly, uh, member. assembly member in london and he was kicked out of swella braverman's speech for heckling her supposedly over uh, being transphobic i think we can play this now Good. My name's Andrew Boff. Well, well, I'm a member of the London Assembly you're, you're, and a loyal, you're, you're a and a loyal Tory for 50 years. So why are you saying that to you? Why are you saying that to you? Why are you saying that? Why are you saying that? trash about gender ideology is making our Conservative Party look transphobic and homophobic. This is not what the Conservative Party is about. We have a proud record of standing up for... But you're a Conservative? Of course I'm Conservative. Are you about the party now? Of course I am. So, so what, what are you, why are you showing me to go to the cloakroom? The cloakroom? No, we'll get so you... Now, we'll please, you're going to be leaving the site, please, sir. Your name, sir, is, is Andrew Boff. Andrew Boff, and I'm a member, member of the London Assembly, a member of the party for 50 years and a proud member. So I'm not going to sit... shout at your Home Secretary? Because she was talking absolutely paranoid about gender ideology, about wokeness and all the rest of it. Our party has a proud record of standing up for yeah. LGBT plus rights, and she's destroying it. And it's what's time she sorted out her own department rather than giving this trash. Away. If you are leaving the site, you'll have to come in on the meeting. Is that the gate? But Andrew, why, why are you saying that, though? Sorry? Why isn't it? Why isn't it? Can, I, can I have my thing out of the... Yeah, uh, yeah we'll get that properly sorted, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. And you, why, 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 why are you saying that? Why, why are you saying that? That's about to a lot of rape men. Well, because she's scapegoating trans people, gay people, anybody who doesn't fit her model. She's dog whistling, and uh, she is also presiding over a department that's failing dismally in terms of processing asylum seekers. Thank you. OK, so that's strong stuff there from uh, Andrew Boff. I will just reiterate a couple of the things he said. He says that Swella Braverman's talking trash about gender ideology. It's making the Conservative Party look transphobic. He accused Swella Braverman of engaging in dog-whistle politics, basically that he's ashamed of the Conservative Party. Yeah, Ben, your reaction? Uh, well, I disagree. I think it's one of those issues, frustratingly, that it is always seemingly so binary, right? And you can't um, raise concerns or criticise uh, without being accused of those kinds of things. I don't think that's fair or reflects what she said. I think there are a lot of people in this country who are really concerned about uh, this kind of creeping gender conversation, uh, whether that is in prisons and the safeguarding stuff yeah. we talked about, whether it's in schools and what we teach our kids. I think it's really important and uh, it's right that as the party of government, we tackle important issues.
I've got a line here from the Tory party. I said, uh, any, any comment on the protester? They say he's not coming back in. <laughs> he's not coming back in. What's <laughs> worth noting there as well is that Christopher Hope got thrown out with him in the process. Yes, I disappeared without my pass. I couldn't get back in. I was late for the show. Uh, all, for, all for the GB News viewers, Patrick. We, we, we will That's let you mean. off. Uh, we, we will definitely let you off. <laughs> Does it tie in a little bit with what Swella Bradman was also saying? She did mention about gender ideology. She also said about... Um, British history being taught correctly to children in schools. She said that several institutions had been captured by a group of people who are the luxury belief brigade or of a certain ideology. Is that true? Have they been captured? I think so. I think it's a minority of places, but I think it is really important to tackle at its root and whether that is revisionist versions of British history or whether that is the gender conversation you know you see some really extreme examples yeah. where people do have some independence to teach and deliver things in the way that they want but actually we would want to reflect as a government and as a country a clear set of British values uh, and I think that needs to be clearer what I've been are one they? of those what are British values well it's a complicated thing right to, to, to explain and justify but what I think uh, on the education is that you need to have uh, a clear set of parameters as to what it is we teach our kids. I've been working with uh, Miriam Cates on the conversation about uh, sexual education in schools and how that has crept and how ideology of different teachers has led to people being taught stuff that is not what's in the biology textbooks, shall we yeah. say, uh, and that shouldn't be allowed to happen. OK, fair enough. Christopher? What's your take on Andrew Boff? Is it, is it, it should he be now thrown out of the party? He's all very well saying leave the conference, but is that appropriate to embarrass the Home Secretary in such a way on the national stage? Oh, it's not helpful, is it, clearly? Um, but, you know, it's a He's an check. elected member of your party. Yeah, yeah. He's not a normal person. There are only a few hundred people who are elected to be met, represent the party in public. He is one. Yeah, a decision for somebody uh, above my station. Obviously, if you were a member of Parliament, I'm sure the Whip's office would have a view on that. Mm, I should they? A, I imagine there's equivalent in the Assembly. I imagine there will be a conversation, but... <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, right, uh, both political parties, major parties, are a broad church of views. The point of conference, in many ways, is we have a debate. But discipline is, is disintegrating here. We've got leaks over HS2, leaks about the net zero. You've got a person yelling at the, the, in public at the Home Secretary. It's not I great. I don't think discipline is disintegrating. Inevitably, in you know social media world we live in, you guys are sniffing around everything. Um, stuff uh, gets I'm not, we're it? not causing him to do that. <laughs> he just does it, and we report on it. <laughs> no, uh, look, uh, HS2, unfortunately, has dominated the conversation over the last few days, hasn't it? I'm sure we'll get some clarity on that. Second the heat off that, to be fair. Well, yeah, maybe. I'm sure we'll get some clarity yeah. from the PM, but what we all want in that conversation is the certainty of knowing what's happening, which sounds like yes. it's on its way.